uh, will be led in prayer by Alderman Gallagher. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance uh, that will be led by Alderman Ferguson. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight to thank you for this day that you provided for us, Lord. I uh, pray that you would uh, be with our children as they go back to school tomorrow, Lord, that you would keep your hand over them, Lord, keep them safe. Lord, I also pray that uh, for this special election, Lord, that uh, you would give uh, the people wisdom, and Lord, that you would uh, uh, watch over us and keep us safe. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we move on with the agenda tonight, um, today was a sad day for the city of South Haven. We had to uh, bury a gentleman that was a great servant for the city of South Haven in the state of Mississippi, um, Judge Bob Perry. And if y'all will, I'd like to um, read a little bit of history about Judge Perry, and then if you will, at the end, join me in a moment of silence to pay respect to Judge Perry. We regret to inform you of the passing of former South Haven Municipal Judge Bob Perry. Judge Perry passed away yesterday evening at Minnesota Healthcare in South Haven with friends and family by his side. Judge Perry served as a judge in the city's municipal court for 21 years. He was a graduate of Horn Lake High School, class of 1949, and was inducted into the Horn Lake High School Hall of Fame in 2009. Judge Perry was an Air Force veteran who served as state senator representing DeSoto and Tate Counties from 1964 to 1976. He was president pro tem of the Senate and even served a stint as acting governor. Judge Perry later served as executive assistant to Governor Cliff Finch from 1976 to 1980. Judge Perry was admitted in the Mississippi Bar in January of 1964. His original law firm was founded in Horn Lake and then he and his partners moved the firm to South Haven in 1967. Judge Perry often volunteered his time to serve as a judge for the annual South Haven Spring Fest barbecue competition. Judge Perry has also been a lay speaker and organist in the Methodist Church. We're very thankful for Judge Perry's contributions to our state and our city. He'll be missed by many. If y'all will join me for a moment of silence to pay respect to Judge Perry. Thank you. Okay, next on our agenda is approval of minutes for the July 19, 2016 meeting. Mr. Mayor, move we approve the minutes of the regular meeting of July 19, 2016 with any additions, deletions, or corrections. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Payne and second by Alderman Kelly. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Yes. Alderman Flores. Yes. Okay, and that motion carries. Next on our agenda is the Rasco Road MOU and bid authorization. Mr. Nick Manley. Mayor Call, this item was discussed at the last board meeting. It's the cost sharing agreement with MNR and Associates and Rasco Road Extension. Uh, the agreement since that time, we had a couple of issues worked out with the uh, other side or with MNR Associates. Um, as it relates to the cost and uh, sequencing of events. The MOU will allow for the uh, city to split the cost with MNR and Associates, which is required to build half the road pursuant to our ordinances for the subdivision. Um, the city will be the, the entity bidding out the project. Uh, before we go to bid, MNR will provide uh, an irrevocable letter of credit in the amount of $209,900, which is <coughs> represents a portion of the project. And then we will then, uh, during the course of the project, either invoice them for over four months for the 25% or draw down that letter of credit uh, for the uh, or their costs associated with the project. Um, we'll go to, this MOU will allow us to go to bid 
uh, as well. We won't go to bid until we get the irrevocable letter of credit from the R&R Associates. Um, and then the, uh, the timeline, we have not, we, after we got our last bid, we have nine days to award the bid or the MOU expires and neither party will have any obligations under it. Uh, so that's kind of the <coughs> big picture of the MOU. I'm happy to answer questions. Dan Cordell is here as well as far as technical <coughs> specific questions you have about the design. Um, but tonight bring this for your approval. Uh, m &R so just has signed it and agreed to it. Uh, so tonight we would need approval for the MOU and then a separate motion authorized when it's been on the project. So moved. Second. And this this motion is on the MOU. Is yes. Right. Okay. So we have a, a, a motion by Alderman Ferguson, second by Alderman Gallagher. Is there any discussion? And I will say that just make it clear for the minutes too that the city has been wanting to do this project obviously for a while from a public safety standpoint. I've been asking everyone all the way through. So uh, I think it's um, the city is able to call share for this MOU. This is exciting, Mayor. Uh, we've been waiting on this a long time. Is there any other discussion? And just, just as a reminder, I think everyone understands this. I mentioned at the last board meeting, but this extension is the um, short distance going east uh, from Sweeney Road, where it dead ends now by the fire station, and it will connect to, um, to La Home. So um, just that short stretch will then make Rasco an east and west corridor that reaches all the way from uh, Getwell on the east side all the way to Highway 51 on the west side. So we think in addition to public safety, it'll also serve as a uh, help with uh, traffic mitigation uh, moving east and west. So we think it's great for our city. This is coming out of the bond issue, right? The funding? Our portion. I have to defer to Chris and later on that. I don't know. Um, yes. Thank you. We had, um, after the other projects from the bond commission of years ago, all the other ones there roughly Roughly, there's about 600,000 left in that. Uh, we, uh, our portion is, um, is 802. Dan, is that right? 80, 80, 902. The total is 902. Uh, Minus 200. Right. Minus 90. right. So we're we roughly may have to use 100,000 a little above uh, from the fund balance, but um, the majority of it will come out of the bond balance. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Juarez? Yes. Alderman Ferguson? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Payne? <laughs> okay, that motion carries. And then we need a separate for the uh, bid to go authorize for us to go to bid on the project. Yes. So I'll move. Second. And the bids will be brought back to you for low bid. So right, for low bid. We have a motion on the uh, bid authorization by Alderman Flores, the second by Alderman Ferguson. Is there any discussion? This one has to be low bid, right? Because it's construction. Well, at lowest and best. I mean, it's not necessarily the low, but lowest and best. But typically, I don't want to speak out of term, but typically that is the, the lowest and best. But sometimes you will have a bid that's higher, but under state law, you can go with lowest and best. But once we get them in, the engineering staff will evaluate that and have a recommendation. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Flores? Yes. Alderman Ferguson? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Yes. Yes. <coughs> okay, and that motion carries. All right, next on the agenda is the um, MEMA change order. I think I talked to Chris with me. That, that's already been approved at a prior meeting. Okay, so we don't need to do anything else. Correct. Okay. All right, then we'll move past that. The next on our agenda is a resolution for our special election. Yes, sir. Uh, as the board is aware and the mayor board are aware, uh, July or last meeting was Alderman Kite's last meeting. Uh, her resignation was effective July 31 in a letter to the clerk uh, that she submitted last week. So under state law, since the election, or since the vacancy in office is uh, longer than six months, in which would be her, her term, the term would be at June 30th, it requires special election. State law requires that there be an election no less than 30, but no more than 45 days from the date of the vacancy. The date of the vacancy is July 31st. Uh, we've the date suggested in the resolution is September 13th uh, for the special election, which would be 44 days from July 31st. Uh, that would then fall within the statute. Um, the plan would be 
uh, under state law there are certain requirements for advertising the resolution the intent uh, for the special election uh, it's, it's a little bit of it's quirky the way the state law works as far as advertisement goes but it requires us to advertise within a certain amount of days that being said we'll end up advertising it five times hosting it in three special places uh, for the election uh, the deadline to qualify um, Andrew, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's off my head. The deadline to qualify would be August 24th, which would be 20 days prior to September 13th. Um, and the uh, clerk's office will have all the information regarding uh, special, I mean, the early voting dates, information with the packets. So if any candidate wants to um, pick one up and express interest in the office. Uh, in addition, at our next uh, item on the agenda will be election commission, uh, or the, a later agenda item will be appointed of the uh, contract with election commissioner. That will help with the election as well, um, the special election. So tonight we just need to pass a resolution setting the special election date for September 13th. Uh, and then that will also allow for the advertisement of the special election, the posting of the special election. And then I think tomorrow is when candidates can start turning in their information regarding their intents to run uh, if they're so big. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. And Andrew can answer any questions. Um, regarding this issue. Will this one uh, resolution cover everything you just said, the dates, the advertisement, and the vacancy? Yeah. Yes, the, uh, the resolution, the only thing this resolution does is set the date for the special election um, and the posting of the notice. The state law state law then comes in and tells you when and after you be done regarding the uh, qualifications and that type of thing. Okay, I was just trying to make sure that wasn't, we didn't have to do more than one on this. Um, I'd like to make the motion uh, for the board mayor to pass a resolution declaring a vacancy in the office of Alderman of Ward 2 in the city of South Haven, Mississippi, and calling for a special election to fill said vacancy pursuant to section 2315-857 of the Mississippi Code. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Ferguson and a second by Alderman Payne. Is there any more discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Ferguson? Yes. Alderman Flores? Yes. Okay, that motion carries. Next on our agenda is election commission agreement. This agreement is with uh, Barry Chatham uh, and the amount of, uh, it, it, it depends, if there's a runoff it's, uh, for the election, it's $1,475 without a runoff, $1,000 to assist our city clerk's office and the city with the special election. And tonight I recommend this for approval. So moved. Second. <clears throat> we have a motion by Alderman Gallagher, a second by Alderman Kelly. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Ferguson? Yes. <coughs> yes. Okay, that motion carries. Next on our agenda is appointment of an, another election commissioner. I believe this is our last one. So we had, at the last meeting we discussed, we had, we have four. We needed one more and tonight was on the agenda for the Alderman Gallagher. Has, yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Okay. okay. So we like, we need a motion. Uh, the person is um, that would round it out and be our last one is uh, Danny Thomas. So we need a motion to appoint Danny Thomas. I'll make a motion. I'll second. We have a motion by Alderman Ferguson, second by Alderman Gallagher to appoint Danny Thomas to the uh, Election Commission. <coughs> Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Ferguson? Yes. Alderman Flores? Yes. Okay, that motion carries. Next on our agenda is resolution for the filing of liens. This resolution that had it's for the given the city authority to file the liens for those properties that have been cut already or condemned and cut. Um, these resolutions will then be, or this res liens will then be turned into assessments um, upon the September October meetings for the uh, going through the assessments pursuant to state law. But not that was condemned properties. Adjudicating the cost of cleaning property. We have a motion by Alderman. Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Flores? Yes. Alderman Ferguson? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Kelly?
Board approval for supplemental agreement number three for the Elmore Road South and supplemental agreement number two for the Elmore Road North construction projects. Mr. Dan Cordell. Motions. The first is uh, supplemental agreement number two. Change your order. Supplemental agreement is what uh, the state uses in this matter. It is a request for an increase of 20. Completed. Uh, this is not the final change order. set up in the project so it's not an increase just a, a justification of the approval of the mayor to sign we have a motion by alderman flores second by alderman gallagher is there any discussion that's for the change number two right that's for number Next one's number three on the southern portion. Yes. Okay, that motion carries. It is a deduct, same thing as a adjustment of the as measured quantities in the field. It's a so moved. Second. That's why he ended up. Next on our agenda is the resolution <coughs> granting authority to claim the state. Second. We have a motion already among the board. And is there anyone in the audience? Seeing none. Roll call. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman. All right, next on our agenda is our planning agenda. Ms. Whitney Cook. For a two lot subdivision on the east side of Getwell, north of Plum Point Road, it's kind of nestled in uh, the Witten Place. So it is in a large lot, residential side of the city. Lot one having 3.15 acres. Lot into the project, and they have um, given you a lot. They did agree to that. Uh, Planning Commission voted unanimously in favor of it at that point. Is there a motion to approve item one? I'll make it a motion. Both ends. This is that no man's land in the, in the middle. already in existence on this. I think what they want to do is break out the back half to give to a family member. Okay. I did have one comment with me, you know, the ingress seat.
Be straight or just a private? Yeah, this will be a private. publicly dedicated once okay I mean is it your documents that record that it's a okay. private ingress egress okay and again we just had a understand why the city's not maintaining the street because it's not a public street right when we plot them if we plot it as a designated ingress egress that's essentially a legal driveway that gains access to another lot um, if we're going to plat it as roadway that the city takes on, it will be identified as right of way or dedicated public street. Okay. I would think it's emergency services. Right. What address would be? They'll have an address to the rear lot. I mean, it'll be addressed off of Mary Jane Lane. It'll just be a really long driveway. Okay. I can see, I can kind of see a problem way in the future with this. Let's say that, I mean, it's a family in the front house and you drive mm -hmm. down the drive to get to another family in the back. Sure. But in the future, say these people go away and somebody else wants to buy these properties i see a, a problem coming with that driveway mm -hmm. yeah but if it's planned that way it's, not it's, it's a legal binding it's legal binding it's, it's legal binding yeah. documents so they may not like them driving down it but it's it's their right to at that point well and that's exactly my concern that's what happened in some other areas we've had some areas that um, some developed 30 40 years ago mm -hmm. and it was a private ingress egress but then the second homeowners or other people did not understand why the city was not maintaining it you know that's why I'm, but if, if we got the legal documents i think we've had enough of them now we just explain it that way we should be safe with this right one. we should be at <laughs> first okay is there any other discussion on item one <clears throat> hearing none roll call alderman kelly yes alderman james yes alderman gallagher yes alderman Ferguson. yes alderman flores yes Motion carries on item one. Item number two, we have an application by Billy Frazier for a veterinarian <coughs> clinic on the northwest corner of Getwell Road and Cherry Place Drive. It's in the Cherry Tree subdivision, the actual PUD. It's going to be your northernmost entrance just south of College Road. Um, basically, we've, you know, we've reassured the planning commission and staff has reassured as well that there will not be any outdoor kennels, um, which was uh, a requirement for this approval. Um, as you can see on there, it's designed to be residential in appearance. It does have a pitched roof, architectural shingles, it's uh, compiled with brick and stone. It does have cedar accent on it. Uh, the only thing that the Planning Commission requested to change was the architectural shingle color. You'll see the building elevations in there and you'll see the sample materials beyond that. It's kind of an orangish red. Um, we toned it down to a weathered wood. You can see it right past there. Um, we've toned it down to a weathered wood, and they did agree to that. Uh, once that agreement came into play, they did vote unanimously in favor of it. Okay, you'll see it right past here. It's, it's there. It's kind of a reddish brown. It didn't really go along with the materials they had proposed for the rest of it. So they came down to the weathered wood, which is a very standard architectural shingle color that we have on all the residential areas around there. So. Like I said, they did agree to that, and we put that in the notes, and it was voted unanimously in favor of at that point. I'll make that motion. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Flores <coughs> on item two, and a second by Alderman Gallagher. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Flores. Yes. Alderman Ferguson. Yes. Alderman Gallagher. Yes. Alderman Payne. Yes. Alderman Kelly. Yes. yes. Okay, that motion carries on two. Item number three, uh, we've had many discussions on, this has been in front of the Planning Commission a few times, uh, a town hall meeting. I've had a few uh, aldermen actually attend some of these meetings. This is the Pinewood development, and this is the property approximately 280 acres on the south side of State Line Road between Tullahoma and Gatwell Road. Uh, in 2005, the comprehensive plan was amended to allow mixed use development in this area as opposed to large lot residential. We had an application come in that requested to obviously use the hard corners for commercial, bring in some office, uh, and then on the interior provide a plain business park. Um, at the first meeting, at the town hall meeting, obviously we had a lot of opposition, mainly due to the warehousing. Um, three different alternatives were brought into play. Uh, what you see here is right before the last one, and essentially what this did was shift the plain business park more towards the interior provide um, 
an area of common open space on the south side to aid buffering Ainsley Park, which was uh, existing hardwoods and pines. Um, and it actually pulled them in and brought a buffer yard along State Line Road a little bit further back so people um, in the Valley Grove area were not actually staring at retail. Um, and the further, further through the discussions, the applicant came back right before the Planning Commission last time, uh, adjusted the plan business park a little bit more towards the interior and brought um, the parking into that TVA line you see going diagonal. And instead of having the retail and the office space along State Line Road in front of Valley Grove, actually proposed a church and an assisted living facility. Um, we let, obviously there's some concerns, citizens mainly, uh, the biggest concerns were obviously playing Mrs. Park. Uh, pollution, traffic, uh, property values were your main three. Uh, we had some concerns on the north side about, like I said, being um, right up on the road against commercial property and they didn't want to sit out on their front porches and then look at it. Um, in the end, the Planning Commission voted to deny it based on the cons outweighing the pros. Um, and at that point, we're bringing it here. I have talked to the applicant. I do have some concerned citizens in the audience that would like to speak. I also have the applicant here as well. Um, in lieu of a full denial, they have asked to propose something different, which would take all the planned business park and leave the church, the assisted living, the office, and the commercial in. Um, so if I could, I could allow him to speak and any of the concerned citizens at this point. So why, why don't you allow the uh, property owner to speak first? Good evening, Mayor Board. My name is David Baker with Fisher Arnold. The uh, address for the record is 9180 Crestwood Hill Drive, Memphis 38125. We appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight and working with the staff and the, the residents and neighbors on, on this project. Uh, as, as pointed out in the staff report, uh, uh, and in the staff presentation that there was a rejection recommended by the Planning Commission. Uh, and uh, Mr. Funderburg uh, would like to get some type of activity happening on the site. We've had a lot of interest during this process uh, for the retail, uh, especially at the state line uh, get well uh, corner. Uh, and we would like to at least have that opportunity to move forward with that while we uh, visit other opportunities for the interior portion of the site. Having said that, I'll be glad to answer any questions and uh, uh, appreciate again working with the city. Just to be clear, what are you asking for tonight? Well, ultimately, we would like to have the planned business part, but as, as to, in order to not get a full rejection, we would like to have the commercial and office on the get well and uh, to the home of uh, sides and remain together for the state and balance of the uh, agriculture. Where houses are gone? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm, they're showing the old picture. I'm seeing, I'm thinking this is a new revised picture that I'm looking at here for the new plan business park. I have uh, brought examples tonight uh, of what it would reflect. Do you have to yes, get a copy, please? Does it require rezoning? Yes, it does. Any form of approval tonight will require rezoning. At this point, it is one large parcel of agricultural use property. <clears throat> with just the hard corners and the office areas, what we would do is take that portion and rezone it essentially to C1 or C4 office. What I would suggest and what we've talked about several times with the citizens is to do a blanket commercial. There are some uses that they weren't very excited about. I can say I wasn't very excited about them myself if you do a blanket C4 or C1. So the staff report you have in front of you, which was the original staff report, will itemize out some things we would like to remove from that. 
Um, so in light of doing a straight C4 zoning, we would probably just take those sections and do small PUDs on them with the itemized uses on them, which would still be a rezoning application. So you, you, you'd still be rezoning it, mm -hmm. but you'd be doing a different rezoning than split it? Instead of doing a huge 280 acre is, rezoning. Did you have a hearing on the rezoning? I just see smaller portions? Yes. No. This came up. Um, Friday. Since the last Friday. I stated that we would put the request in front of the board and whatever motion is made to either bring it back to the planning commission or make a decision here. Well, my concern would be just just talking out loud, just my concern would be you haven't had we haven't had a hearing on a on a commercial rezoning. I don't think you can I don't think this board can be the no. first board to impress or the first board to hear. I think you'd have to have a board here other one to hear. I'm sorry, go ahead. But, but the planning commission did hear the the, the site plan and I believe the main objection was the plan of business part. So they did hear the case uh, and so it has been heard with the But was there action taken on it? With just the portion of commercial and office note. Not just that. Were you here for that meeting? Oh yeah. <laughs> and so was I. About three or four times. <laughs> so I guess, I guess my... So they, they did not okay this plan. <laughs> They, they, denied, right. they denied the plan, the old right. plan there. That's correct. Right. Okay, right. so I would, my thinking is that our, our planning commission would have to meet on this one on a rezone or not. But can we let our, let our city attorney, would you answer that for us? I would, I would, my concern would be if, if, if that, if there has not been, of course I wasn't at the meeting, but if there was not any action or anything presented for that specific alternative to be a C4, C1 zone, then you'd have to have a hearing for that portion of it. I don't know if you come up with my concern be tonight if we considered anything that was voted on or considered at the original meeting of the planning of the planning commission that it didn't have the it didn't have a hearing, if you will, for that act for that particular rezoning question. I mean rezoning application, if that makes sense. Now because at, at the hearing that night it was <coughs> done as a planned business park. It was done as a mixed use development. Mixed use development. Mm -hmm. And that was voted down. That was voted down. Uh, and then tonight, obviously, a C1 and C4 is different from mixed use development. Well, I, I, or is it? I would caution from doing a straight zoning either way. We would still do a mixed use development because you have office uses and commercial uses, uh, church uses, and assisted living uses, and what he's newly proposing. Would your office um, be willing really, really to recommend a change to a C1 or C4 tonight? I, no, we don't want to do a blanket rezone to a C4. What I said, just like in our report, our commercial areas, we worked it off of a of a master list of C4 uses, but because it was a PUD, you can take out uses you don't want and uses you do want. You can add in strip centers, car washes, things like that. We removed, which is allowed in a C4 zone, but we didn't want to see in this commercial area. So it was already tweaked into a PUD form for the commercial corners either way. But to answer your question on presentation for what you're looking at now, no, that was not an alternative that was brought in front of the planning commission. But what we're proposing not still to be a, a, a PUD, it's just the planned business portion is removed and left in the ag list. I mean, I, I see, I see, your, I mean, I'm not, I'm, like I'm, the, I'm not the judge. No, I'm not I, the judge. I, I see everybody's point. I just, I, my. I think most, most everybody that's been involved with this, they know that that land's going to develop to something, but they just knew that they did not want any more warehouses took those out, but I think we need to have a little time for the residents in that area to look this plan over and get this approved, uh, you know, the <coughs> proper way. I'm, I'm not sure if we, we're taking the right approach to this or not. Nick, are we clear? I mean, are we, are, can we even look at this tonight? I think you can definitely look at what's being presented, absolutely. I mean, what was the Definitely what was presented to the Planning Commission can be looked at. I think the questions are looked in, you know, voted on act number four. I think the question is coming, can this board take action on something that, uh, this is where I'm getting confused, I guess myself, can this board take action on something that may or may not have been presented to the Planning Commission? And it sounds like it was presented, but there was no action taken. Is that what I'm understanding? Well, I think that the, the misconception here is, this is all a conceptual design that had sections of uses all through it. Um, there is another alternative that, like I said, that's this is not the final alternative. The, the final alternative that was given to the Planning Commission that was voted down still involved the Planning Business Park in there. 
it did remove the retail strip or the retail area along State Line Road and put in uh, an assisted living in a church area. Um, there was some maneuvering of the buildings, um, but essentially the overall plan was denied at the Planning Commission based on, primarily based on the warehousing. Um, it was asked by the chairman of the Planning Commission would the applicant remove the warehousing um, for approval, and at that time, not his fault at, at all, but he, that discussion had not happened with his yeah. property owner, so he wasn't prepared to make that agreement with the Planning Commission at that point. They voted unanimously to deny. And Mr. Manley, isn't the Planning Commission I mean, recommending body to this board? Correct. And then this board could take the action they seem fit, whether it's to send it back or to take it. That's my thing. I agree with you. I think my concern tonight would be this board taking action from the standpoint of doing that. I think this board could table it for further review by the planning commission slash planning director planning office. Um, my concern, I guess we have had a hearing on the property, uh, but this the, you're correct. The planning commission is, is simply recommending board. This board has the ultimate authority. So tonight, just so the board's also aware, you do have the authority to basically say we don't agree with the planning commission whatsoever and we vote to go with what was presented um, and, and disagree with the planning commission so the board maintains that authority as well uh, so it's it's a I'm not trying to you know defer but it's a board decision tonight how it stands uh, but the board's options would be to uh, uphold the planning commission recommendation um, or uh, which would be denied, or a return to the planning rec commission recommendation and say, this is, we disagree, we want this here, We're, we'll vote for this. Uh, I think another option too is to table for further review based on like, based on the recent um, uh, changes that were presented on, I guess, Thursday or Friday. Uh, now, I, I guess I'll also, my thought would be though, just as the attorney, I would want to hear from the planning directors, like what are your thoughts on well, I mean, if, if those are the options, I would much rather table than, than deny or than to approve at this point because, honestly, I haven't had a lot of time to review the newly submitted documents. Uh, getting it on Friday and Saturday and Sunday and hearing it on Tuesday, um, I think we're working towards a cohesive development. Um, they've made some big concessions on their side, sounds like. Um, we're still working with a lot of the residents, um, trying to make sure that we get what they want in there. Um, so if it's up to me, I would recommend tabling at this point. There are still two other things that need to be answered, though. We never really got a clear answer on the question. Um, if there's been an amendment made by the property owner, but um, it's not been brought back in front of the, to, to have another hearing about it, since there's a proposed amendment, but we don't know exactly what that is other than just the comment of taking the warehouses out. So, Nick, my question to you is, by law, does there have to be another hearing regarding the amendments, or could the vote... For example, could the board vote tonight to approve it without the warehouses, without there being a hearing? I would caution against the board voting tonight to approve it without that without that being presented. Needs to have a hearing. I, I would I would I would recommend a hearing since there is a change from okay. the standpoint of, of of that thing. Now that being said, that's my recommendation. I don't think legally you know, it would be half required to because it's already been presented from a hearing from a zoning perspective to a planning commission board. So it's not required by law, but a recommendation. Yeah, and that, I, would say I would want to research a little bit further on that. Okay. But just tonight, you know, just looking at it from right now, I'd want to, but I would want the time to at least research sure. that just a little bit to make sure I'm right on that. Because I, I could see where the, and, and get to look at the minutes from the planning commission meeting as well, and look at those minutes and see what was actually said, what was actually presented. Because I think the concern from me, from my perspective is, Having that, having something presented tonight to the board that hasn't been considered by the planning commission, uh, to me, would, would, would I think the board have the authority to overturn the planning commission's recommendation. Um, the issue would be tonight doing something that has not been actually reviewed by the planning commission, and when our planning director is also saying she'd like a little bit more time to review it as well. So that would be my concern tonight. And then my last question would be, in all fairness to the property owner, uh, rather than us being presumptuous and just assuming. Uh, how does the property owner know that the plan that was um, turned down by the planning commission would not be approved by the board without a without a formal vote? I don't. I don't. I think I, I don't know that. I mean, so I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If you table it, you're telling you're not telling the property owner anything. He doesn't know if it's been approved or because even though the planning commission recommended that it be turned down for it to be officially turned down, the board of aldermen had the ultimate authority to turn it down. 
Correct. So before they go to plan B and submit another, go through another hearing with another design, I think they need closure to their original proposal because there's, never, there's not been any formal city action on it. I agree. Now, I agree. The board is, the board is tonight wanting to definitely take action on what was presented to the planning commission. I think, obviously, I think it seems, it seems like everybody's on, on the same page with that. So Which would not prevent them from making another amendment and going back through the process. Correct. Correct. So to me, and the board can do whatever you want, the table or do whatever, but I would suggest that you give the property owner a clear answer. You know, he's made a, he's come before you to ask for there to be an approval based on what was submitted at the hearing. And then for him to know what the answer is, yay or nay, there needs to be a board vote on that. May, What's may I ask a question about you? That's, yes, sir. If it is voted and rejected, is there a time period that we have to wait to refile or do we appeal it with the, the new information that, that we brought forth tonight? That's a good question. Well, I don't, that was exactly my question I was going to ask Nick. If we deny this application, and that's the one we're denying, not the one we have in our hand, this is their doom, um, then, then that gives him a clear line that we stand behind our planning commissioners and say that that's not acceptable and we're not going to take that. Now, during that, do we need, do, does he just come back and resubmit this to our planning, our, our planning department, our planning commission, and come before them and say, okay, I got a whole new thing that here it is. Yeah, it would have to come in front of us as a new project altogether, yes. uh, starting from scratch. Okay, but that would work better denying this tonight. If his if his and owner wants an answer, a formal answer tonight, yes. I would prefer it being remained back to the planning commission based on this new than a total rejection. If that's the direction. so, a table would look. Would the table work but the same way? I don't know if we can remain back to the planning commission though. If this board is the ultimate, but there's they're not going to bring anything back. That's going to be. Anything, I mean, it's just going to be. I think at that point, almost be re redoing it, setting it anyway, because you have to have the hearing. But the, the planning commission would basically be a recommendation by they've given you a recommendation. If you change it, the planning commission or planning department could say we need to have the hearing for that particular change. But I don't, that's that's the question is, does that, does that, the question tonight with Tommy the research is, does the change in the structure and the um, plan itself require a new hearing? Okay, and, and that's kind of what my question was too. If 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 we don't deny this, let's say we table this tonight. Okay, that just means he goes back before the planning commission to me, and and it submits more changes. And these are his changes that he's showing, which would shorten your period to, of time rather than a straight denial. I understand where he's coming from. But if we and, and that's my that's kind of my concern. Tabling it, it, it expedites it for a yay or nay a little quicker. Okay. Um, because and that's what we're looking for. if we do start over the process again, I mean they have formal applications, re public notices, new fees, and it goes into about another three month process. But if I See. table it, can he bring it back to the planning commission with well, changes? Well, if you table it, you have to untable it here. Once he finds out right. what we can and can't do, he may find that it's just a recommendation from myself and the residents and a decision here. He may find that it's a formal recommendation back from the planning commission. But I, I think but if we table, always, we can at least get an answer from Nick first. But you could always rezone this. And that's my point is tonight the board could rezone it as presented. You, yeah, they can rezone it as presented. As yes. presented to the planning commission. This board could overturn the planning commission and rezone tonight. Right, or, or do a flat denial. And yeah. back to planning commission. Rezone yes. it to what he's presenting tonight. Yeah, you could over, I think I would think I would think you could overturn the planning commission on that tonight. And, and let him hear what he has to say with this new proposal. Well, you'd, we be you'd, you'd be, be overturning it. You'd be approving it. Still be overturned. And see, that's my that's my point. And I see we got someone in the audience who wants to speak. We're gonna get right to you, okay? Um, that's my again. That's my thing. If I'm the property owner and I'm not speaking to you, I'm asking you. Um, if there's no vote, this the planning commission is an advisory board. They have no authority to make a decision for the city of South Haven. These people here make the decision for the city. So if I'm a property owner, even though it's been recommended that it be turned down, I want to hear, ultimately, I want it to be a formal decline. But I mean, if, I guess what I'm asking you is, if you don't want to vote, if you table it, then you never will know if you would have been approved for the warehouse. You see what I'm saying? 
So if you're willing to make that sacrifice without even knowing what the, how the board's going to vote, that's I guess that's your I guess that's your call. Yeah, I think we probably have a pretty good feel of how the board will vote, uh, but we don't know that for sure. But, uh, I just know as a property owner, if I wanted to warehouses, I wouldn't want to be officially declined before I went to the you know before I compromised. But but I'm not, that's that's I guess that's your call. That's your, could we, could, but if I heard you right, and I, I may not have heard you right, but can this body tonight not overturn the Planning Commission's recommendation and rezone it to what it is right, what he's about to propose, as long as what he's proposing does not include the warehouses? Yeah, I think you could. That question becomes, you don't, you're, you're basically hearing something that has not been, that has not, you're, you're considering hearing. something that has not right. been considered about formal hearing to our ordinances. Well, you're seeing was, a plan that has not been, you're seeing a plan or a piece on a piece of paper that has not been considered by the, at the formal hearing day. So to, 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 to err on the side of caution, it would be better to, to, uh, to uphold the Planning Commission's recommendation and then let them go back and have a formal hearing. You can do I that. Can, I can see where the mayor's coming from with that. Statement. That's what I'm saying. You're never answering their right. initial proposal. I mean, right. and that's the thing again. I mean, not that we don't respect our planning advisory board because we do or we would we wouldn't right. put them on the right. board. However, they have no authority. Right. The, the authority rests with this board. So if you're if they present it with the warehouses and there's never a vote on it, we've never it's never been declined. And that's what I'm saying. If I'm the if I'm the property owner, I want I want to hear a decline before I go to Plan B. Unfortunately, so. we do that, and that to be to me seems to be the best way to go. But if we do that, then they go back into the hopper for a three month process. But is there a way to do that without? The delay. That's, that's what I was trying to come up with with the table. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. not. Not that, not that I'm aware of. Um, well, we got a unanimous from denial from the planning commission. Yeah. I mean, I, and that's where I think he, that's why I think he's erring on the side of caution. That, right. And I mean, uh, you know, any any of the ways will work. I understand where Nick's coming from, and, and you know, our concerns are, are for the citizens and for the owner of the property too. I'm just trying to see which one's going to expedite it quicker and get everybody an answer, be it one they like or one they don't like. I mean, the people, the residents who have been here, they've attended every meeting, they've come to every town hall meeting. Um, I'm like the mayor, I want to give them an answer. Um, I'd like to give Mr. Funderburg an answer, but you Well, know. I think Mr. Funderburg's do an answer, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, and we, need, we need to take into consideration what's fair to them as well. Right. I'm sure they put a lot of money already out, out on this. But that being said, I still think that we need to err on the side of caution and go forward with the planning commission's recommendation. Are you making that motion? No, you are. Okay. And I'll make that motion to the board, the mayor, that we deny item number three application to Lanny Funderburg to rezone 280 acres of property. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion by Alderman Ferguson to decline item number uh, three number three and a second by Alderman Kelly is there any other discussion what was the motion though I mean what yeah. is what was the proposal the proposal was for the plan with the PUD with the developments warehouse. I mean with the, the retail and developments without the warehouses no, the proposal no, that you're voting on tonight is what yeah. you see out there. You're, with the you're denying a mixed use development that included office, commercial, and planned business park yeah. as the uses on the property. And then we were requesting to amend that to, to take the business park off warehouses out but leave the, the remaining. Yeah, I can understand that, but I think uh, I, I, I would rather it be done right. Should we cross all the T's? Yeah, because I don't think you can. I, I get what you're trying to do, and I respect that. But I don't think that formally you can change the plan in the middle of the process. Right. I mean, we're we're in the unless again, unless Nick tells me different. The way I understand it, it does have to go through a hearing, and that's not been done yet. The amended plan, the plan that's on the table now, that was uh, uh, turned down by the planning commission commission includes the warehousing. So we can't just say, well. We'll approve it if you take the warehousing out. I mean, it has to go back and, and go back to a hearing again. Is that correct, Nick? I thought well, that's what I understood you said. I think they're wanting to, I think that the point of Mr. Arnold is they're wanting to say you've already had the hearing on the zoning. They're saying, well, to change the zoning, if you change the zoning, we'll take the warehousing out. And I don't, I don't want to speak for you, but that seems to be like we've already had the hearing on the zoning as a compromise to 
assist with overturning of the Planning Commission, we will take out the warehousing of that. So what you're doing tonight is you're just considering overturning the Planning Commission from their zoning, from what they they denied the zoning of, with some new details that, in all fairness, have not been submitted to the Planning Commission, but are being submitted to this board. The concern becomes the Planning Commission never acted on that from the standpoint of they never saw these plans, the residents never saw these plans, it wasn't part of the public hearing with these plans. Uh, and so that's that's the part I would want to research a little bit more. If you're not you're not asking for a different zoning. You're just asking for a different. Uh, you're asking for a different use within the zoning itself. Is what it boils down to. So I think that's the question: is can you consider the zoning differently? I mean, the zoning wouldn't change, or if it's the same, the zoning would still be the same, but just be the the uses and the, the uses underlying uses zoning. The, the, the underlying uses zoning. in the mixed use zoning are being revised. But I would assume that this board would want to know that before they. Sure. No, I mean, I'm not, I'm just trying to help yeah, clarify what he's saying. I'm not saying that, I'm saying that's, I think that would be what, am I saying your point right? Yes, so, I mean, yes, we, you know, as, as I stated, Mr. Funderburg would like to get some type of activity started on the site. We've been working on this for almost a year now, uh, and so we, we've been to all these meetings, we felt like the major objection was the planning business part portion of this. The, commercial and office uh, complies or conforms with the comprehensive plans and, and land use plans for get well to the home road so we felt like that was compliance with the city's uh, long-range plans but the objectionable portion of the planned business part we said well let's take that out let's do some more market research of what what could go in that place but while that's going on let's let's get some activity because like i said we've had, had numerous uh, inquiries about Property at the corner there, so okay. that, that's our intent. It's not not to confuse anybody or, or anything like that. But it's just like so we've been at this for uh, quite a, quite a bit of time, and we'd like we'd like that. And let me and I hope this will help just to help clarify for everyone. Excuse my non-governmental time frame attitude, um, but things take so long. Is there another way? Since this has already been presented and discussed for so many many months. <clears throat> Is there a way that Mr. Funderburg can come back and amend the plans, schedule a hearing, let them make a recommendation, put it back on our agenda quickly without going through? So when we talk about going through the whole process again, why is that necessary? Why can't he just amend it, put it back in front of the hearing again, let the Planning Commission make a recommendation and let's vote on it? Well, I mean, I, I'm fine with that. I guess what we what we're saying is the next planning commission is not till the very end of August, and then it'll go to the third hearing for the ordinance to be rezoned in what, September. Um, can, we so, not, can, we not, can you not call a planning commission meeting? A special, a special hearing? A special hearing? Um, I mean, we can try. I've never actually called a special hearing, but I mean, we can certainly I ask we them. try and we try to expedite. I understand where the mayor's I mean, I agree, too, but I don't want to hold them off any longer. Right. They, year. Yes, I don't. I, I want to speed it up sure. for you. And Mr. Funderburg, we try that? I mean, I, I will do whatever Stats. Nick says I have to do. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I believe the statute requires, I think, 15 day notice. This is off the top of my head, I think it's 15 day notice for a hearing That's right. um, for planning. So you have to, so you have, so once everything's submitted, you just have, you set up 15 <coughs> days and you have to put the hearing and planning commission. I don't, I have to look and see what your ordinance is say. I mean, I don't, I don't. All it states is the planning commission meets the, into the mind, the field process comes to the Board of Aldermen. It doesn't go into a special hearing uh, I think you format can, you for planning commission. The, if you set the hearing on the sign for 15 days, or you know, right. 15 days, I think you could then have a planning commission meeting. Mm -hmm. That that I don't think it has to be necessarily. I don't think there's anything magic about the the, the night y'all meet. I think you have, but you do have to. Have, you do you would want to put on that big red sign and advertise. Very familiar with those signs. And then you got to give the two uh, <laughs> the notice and the paper, the paper right. all that. Um, but that, I think the, I think the main limitation to the mayor's point is speeding it up is it could be sped up. It's speeding up. It's just there are certain de deadlines by statute or certain notice periods. So 15 day notice is required under uh, under state law. Uh, so that whatever. And I think it's I don't think I don't think it's 15 working days like it is on a bid a bid. I think it's just 15 days. Like a bid statute is 15 working days. This is just 15 days. But what I'm hearing it still would be realistic to get it back on a, on this agenda in September. I think you do September. We, yeah, we would get it back in September regardless. I just think it'd be better for the board to have a month to see it formally rather than try to you know, make a decision in, you know, in mid-shift, you know. I mean, um, I, 
I mean, I'm fine with however you want to handle it, but I'll, it, I'll take an expedited however we make the motion. And that would be my uh, response back to the property owners. If we'll, so you're not going through this long, lengthy thing again. Everybody's familiar with most of it. Planning Commission is obviously familiar with it, with the exception of the concern of the warehouses. So I think we can speed that up and make it quicker. But I, I think it's, uh, I, I do think, and again, it's the board's call, it's not my call. I think that he needs a formal answer, you know, with a plan that's been de declined by the uh, Planning Commission so he knows what Plan B is. Well, I, I agree with that. I think we need to take that care of that and let them come back with a new revision, and that way they're, they're done it clean and we're erring on the side of caution. Yeah, and that. I don't like to speak for someone else. I mean, we don't, right. until we take the vote, we don't know what the vote is. You know? So, so we're voting it down tonight, and then we're voting on what's been presented to the planning uh, that went to the planning commission. It was presented to the board. Now, what's on the agenda is what we're voting on tonight, which is. And I, then I don't. I mean, I don't. Are we? Laura Ferguson's. I think motion. Yeah, I made a motion to deny item number three, which is this item right here that we're looking at, not the one that got passed out. Right. So it's going to require a new submittal as a new project. If it's voted down tonight, it will become a whole new project, is what I'm saying. Well, isn't it a whole new project? No, I mean, well, uh, yes, but I mean, okay. that's, I just want to make everybody, I mean, I'm, I just need how, you to be aware of it. How do we not make it a new project and allow him to amend this? No, I'm, I mean, I'm forward. fine with hmm. what you're doing. You I'm just do saying it. they have to, they're going to have to refile and resubmit everything. It's going to become its, its own new project now. I mean, that's I mean, that's 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 right. That's the, I think that's where we okay. want to go. I guess I was, I was misunderstanding a little bit. So. Well, and that's why I asked the question earlier. If there's a way to mend it on the fly, mm -hmm. then let's do that. But they're, based on what Nick's saying, there's not a way. You can't amend it on the fly. It's got to go back to the, the hearing. So. I don't, that's thing, I, just, that's thing, I, don't, I don't know. That's why I want to research that far. But I, I don't know. If, I mean, I think you could come in and say, I don't know the answer. That's thing, I don't, without looking a little bit further, with it being changed, I need to research that. But can we table to we can we get more information? Can we do that? Because we could vote on it again next meeting. I, right, it could come back up in two but weeks. But I think if we find, but I we do think the planning this. commission would need to hear. But if we find out that we have to have we the hearing, two weeks. we've wasted two more weeks. Yes. But declining the original proposal that doesn't change anything. Like if if the board voted tonight to decline it, I mean obviously if they voted to approve it, then all this is. Yeah, but if they, uh, if the board voted to turn it down, that still doesn't change the fact that when you do your research on it, we could give him a quicker answer that it can be amended without going through the whole process again. Well, I think once you turn it down, you go through the whole process. Okay. And that's that's what I was trying to point out. It does start the whole process well, that's not over fair again. Either. Again, I, that's I, I'll shut up. But I, I just know if I were a property owner, I want I want closure. I want to know what the answer is. You know, but. That's again. That's the board's call. How long do you think it would take you to find out the answer? I can research this week. But I mean, we don't. I mean, unless we call, you know, we don't special meet again. Meeting. Yeah, special meeting. But we don't meet again for two weeks. Because our guess is special meeting at some point later. Uh, and hearing what you've heard, would you rather be tabled? Yes, sir. We would like to because we, we spent a lot of effort, and like I said, Mr. Bumberg spent a lot of money trying to get to this point in. And like I said, we'd like to get some type of return without having to start over. You know, pay five, three, two fees, uh, additional meetings, and things like that. And like I said, we, we, we were hoping, uh, and we felt like the main objection was the, the planning business part, and you know, that the commercial and office that fit with the long range plans of the city. So we were, we were trying to trying to appease the neighbors by taking the planning business park out, but still trying to move forward with, with some type of development to get some yield and return on the property. But you're under the understanding that if we, if we table it tonight and we come back, tell this no we've got to start all over again that that's where we got to be right I understand that all right I don't think you'll find it, but yes I well we've got a motion on the table so okay we have a motion to decline as submitted um, by Alderman Ferguson and second by Alderman Kelly so do we want to uh, rescind said, that motion I, I make a motion to rescind my motion to deny item number three okay and then is there a second to rescind it? Okay, I guess we can do that. Um, a motion to rescind the original motion by Alderman Ferguson and a second by Alderman Kelly. Is there any discussion about rescinding that motion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Kelly? 
Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Ferguson? Yes. Alderman Perez? Yes. Okay, that motion carries, so we're sending that, so we're back to where we were. So now, um, before we decide to table, I did promise the gentleman in the audience a chance to speak. So would you please come forward? Most of life, my name is Joe Baker. I live in Hensley Park, and I appreciate uh, you giving us the opportunity to present the uh, some views that are pertinent to people that live near this area. First of all, I agree with the city attorney that the 15-day requirement for public notice for people living in the neighborhood has not been met. In this particular situation, twice it has not been met. And it occurs to me that uh, Pinewood is anxious to shove this through as fast as they can with only one side of it being shown. Um, one of the things I like about living in South Haven is that the Planning Commission and the City of South Haven, I think, have done a very good job of protecting residential property values by separating residential areas from areas that they should not be adjacent to. And uh, on the, where we are at this point is there have been two votes on this. One was two votes no, four votes to table, no votes yes. Then uh, the question was clearly asked at the <coughs> meeting that you're now talking about, the Planning Commission meeting, uh, would you be willing to take the warehouses out? The answer was no. <coughs> there are lots of vacant spaces in existing warehouse areas west of 1620 State Line Road. Uh, there, there's a number of vacant spaces in there. The concern of the people of Ansley Park and some of the Chambliss divisions, which that involves 490 homes. We did some very careful research about what the future zoning of this would mean if the warehouses went in. I understand that we've backed off from that some, but if the warehouses went in, for the 490 homes, there would be a loss of eight and a half million dollars in property value almost immediately. We checked a house that was just north that sold roughly two weeks ago. 4,800 uh, 4, square foot house, originally a $400,000 house, it sold for $290,000. There's, there's another uh, cheaper house in another warehouse area and uh, it was originally a $180,000 house. It lost 18000 These are actual sales. So... I'd be interested uh, to know when the, when, when the, what you're comparing it to, what year was the, was the house worth that much? The, uh, the $400,000 house sold last week. When was it? When was it? When purchased? was it built? <laughs> no, when was it appraised for four hundred? Right. When was? Well, it was. For four hundred, uh, I think you said. I believe it was fifteen years ago. See, that's that, and that's and again, I I respect what you're saying, but that's not a fair comparison because property values are tremendously different throughout the city and the country. I I understand, but what ago. was the factor that? caused it to lose that much value. Well, there's been a lot of factors that decreased value it's in 15 years. My personal house has decreased in value uh, since I built it. I built mine 15 years ago, and, and it's not worth as much now. I mean, just because of the recession and everything that happened, you can't, I'm just saying you can't blame that. The president that. tells us the recession is over. I don't care what the president says. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, at any rate, we, we did we did honest research, and there were estimates that the loss would be considerably higher. One of those estimates was EPA influenced, and quite frankly, I don't believe much of what EPA says. Anyhow, there's some other factors. 
as you know, uh, <clears throat> DeSoto County has been in a tussle with EPA for, what, 20 years over air quality standards. And finally, after a, an enormous amount of pressure, including from one of our own senators, we're now in attainment with EPA. We need to look very, very carefully at what we do to change this. We don't want to go back into non-attainment. And we, we don't want to lose the value of anybody's house. But, you know, it, you can drive through these these housing areas and see that they're uh, quite well kept, landscaping including, and that sort of thing. And the homeowners should not be victims of an overly ambitious developer. And by the way, let me ask Mr. Baker, have you all had contact with uh, IDI on the possibility of selling this property? You haven't? IDI is not involved in this. Excuse me? IDI is not uh, involved in this. But there, uh, there was the, the proposition of selling this property had this gone through was a very definite possibility, right? Yes. So we're dealing with somebody that probably doesn't even live in Mississippi, much less DeSoto County. Uh, Mr. Mayor, again, thank you for your courtesy and hearing the point of view. Alderman, appreciate your consideration too. Uh, appreciate the attorney's opinion. I think he's right. And, uh, you know, if you're going to do something like this, most actions, including even those of EPA, which is as much of a rogue uh, government uh, bureaucracy as exists, they have an obligation to have public notice of intent. And the public notice of what's in front of you right now has not been held. And this developer twice has failed to meet the 15-day requirement. Well, in all fairness, please, Stan, I, I appreciate because I, I want my goal is for everyone to, to make an informed decision. Right. whatever that may be. So I appreciate your comments and please please remain standing right there because sure. a couple of things I want to clarify. All right. I don't agree with your the facts don't support a couple of things that you said because your initial statement was that uh, that we have vacancies in our warehousing now which we do have vacancies but there's a reason for some of that. There's been some consolidations among companies and Jim Flanagan, our economic development director, I've been in many meetings with other people as that are prospects to come here and we do not have a vacancy problem. Actually, there is a lack. We, we need more warehouse space in the city of South Haven. And I've heard, the reason I'm saying that because throughout all this conversation, I've heard that, and that's not, that's not true. Um, that's something that some have continued to repeat, but we do not have um, an excessive vacancy in warehouse space. We actually need more warehouse space. Mr. Mayor, uh, I didn't state it clearly enough, apparently. There are vacant lands west of 1620 State Line Road. Several very large parcels of land. There are warehouses all around that land. So you're, you're not saying the existing structures, you're saying That's that right. there's land for potential? That's right. Okay, I got you. Thanks for clarifying right. that. And then the other thing was the, um, the comment about the EPA. Um, having been in many meetings regarding our air quality, uh, I can tell you that, that a lot of that has nothing to do with South Haven, Mississippi. It, it's, it's the fact that we're grouped in with West Memphis, Arkansas, right. which is, you know, trucking capital of the world. And so a lot of our um, uh, air quality uh, attainment was not caused by the truck traffic here in South Haven. It's caused by the exposure to West Memphis. I, I was involved in some um, EPA tussles in the 1990s. At that time, Carol Browner and Al Gore, who had a habit of disobeying the law, ignoring the law, and so forth, uh, they wanted to slap a, to give you some idea of their behavior, it has nothing to do directly with South Haven, but in that EPA can turn on anybody, it is related. 
they wanted to find the taxpayers of West Memphis $20 million for a Superfund site that had never been in the city limits of South Haven and never been controlled by the city of South Haven. We fought that battle for 10 years. Finally, in the Bush administration, it was ended. The city of South Haven wound up having to pay zero. They even asked us if we would cut the berm on the Superfund site. We said, no, we had nothing to do with this to start with, and we're not involving ourselves now. So uh, I, I, think, I think all of us have a deep respect for our law enforcement and our people who genuinely serve us, who try to help us out in a weather emergency or whatever the case may be. But there is a deep-seated fear across this land of what government can do to us. Right, and, and then uh, in relation to that, I'd like to clarify one other thing too. The accusation that uh, we did not give proper notice, would you please address that with me? I mean, this is not something, and again, I'm listening to what you're saying, but I know that I've been involved in many discussions. This has been discussed for many, many months. Uh, I don't think it's a fair statement to say that the property owner is trying to force anything down anyone's throat because there's been much discussion for many months about that. But Whitney, if you will, please sure. address to make sure that I don't, want, I don't want Mr. Baker to leave here feeling like that the properties have been done wrong or that we have not done things properly. So would you please address sure. that? Um, I think one of the things Mr. Baker's referring to is there was a period, I believe it was the April hearing, that the dates weren't adjusted, so we held it. Um, the other discrepancy that he's stating is the one I checked with Nick on was when um, the Planning Commission heard it and it was brought up to the board and the dates, because we had held it and brought it back up to the Board of Aldermen, he felt that the dates on the board needed to be changed. The red um, signs, the red were, signs. Changed. were not changed. You said since it had had its formal hearing at the Planning Commission date that we didn't have to go back and change it. Uh, I think Debbie verified that while I was you out of town. Okay, you're talking um, about you had a Planning Commission hearing. We had the Planning Commission hearing. At that, at that hearing, it, and it was tabled, tabled until the next meeting. And since we had that formal hearing, you said the dates didn't have to be changed. Correct. Mr. Baker, he respectfully disagrees with that. But that um, was giving more, actually more it was, time. It was more, and, and, and we've had town hall meetings, and uh, Mr. Baker's not on our email list, but I have a huge list of emails from the property owners and the HOAs I've sent them all the stuff immediately when I get it and been in correspondence with them since November. Um, and we have a good rapport with them. We've tried to keep them um, informed of every change that's come on all the way down to the change by removing the warehouses we let them know Friday. Um, so I feel like we've been very open about it and very um, uh, just forthright with I would, it. I would say to you that uh, Whitney's office has been cooperating with us. Thank you. Well, the hearing that I would, I would I would respectfully disagree with Mr. Baker that when you had a hearing and you table it, the hearing notice stands. That, that stands that's that, where, that's that you, where I verified it. With that, you give, that, that you had a hearing date, you tabled it that hearing date, I don't think you had to re-advertise for the hearing at that point. I think you would just have that, you would, at, that no, at the hearing it was then tabled to another hearing. Right. And at his request though, we did ask the city attorney to make sure if there was something else we needed to do formally just to uh, make sure we were doing it correctly, I and mean, we wanted to do that, um, and we did. And that was at the last hearing, mm -hmm. the last board meeting. I mean, I think, as, I mean, just listening to everybody, everybody talk, I, I can look into it, but I mean, does the planning director or planning office have a recommendation with the revised, revised plans? Um, with the I mean, like I said, we've got, we got them Friday. Um, yeah. Honestly, I haven't taken a, a huge look at them. There were some other things that needed to be tweaked that were kind of fine-tuning, like I said, up against Valley Grove. Um, I think we've about got that dealt with. There's a, a couple of the, the mores that I still want to go over, just some minor things with them. But um, otherwise, like I said, the, the warehousing come out, coming out would appease the residents. Um, we did inform them that the Planning Commission, when those come out, the infrastructure improvements that were promised to State Line Road and things like that are also removed as well. I would inform the Planning Commission of that. So, I mean. Okay, wait, all right. Now, all right, let me make sure I'm hearing you right. Uh, so Mr. Alderman Ferguson was here during virtually all of this. Uh, that's, Correct. That's, that's good. Let me, I want to make sure you're right. Mm -hmm. So we, you're, you really haven't looked at the changes yet. I mean, you got them on Friday. You probably looked at them, but you, you really yeah, have the recommendation. Right. On the no hard copies. Got them in an email. Um, talked to David on the phone and said, "What do you think about this?" I said, "Well, we can just bring it up there and we'll see how they want to make a motion." It seems um, clear to me after hearing the additional information. The fair thing to do for the property owner and all the residents and the board 
is uh, to give them time to let Nick do some research on if, if there can be an amendment. So it's my recommendation to the board we do table it. I, I think it'd be fair for everybody if you do table it this morning. But we don't we don't have to necessarily make it a restart, do we? Don't we control Tabling that process? No. And, and it may be that it, it can be just reviewed and handed back up here after review from the planning department. It may be that it has to come back down, but it, I've never had to go through the process in this manner. So, I mean, I'm like the mayor, I'd rather have the research with Nick first. Well, I, uh, I thought also, I mean, my research would be quick, it'd be done tomorrow. I mean, is the plane, uh, I don't see it being a big issue. I think that it's gonna be giving your office time to give a recommendation at that point. Um, because that's going to be. I mean, I feel pretty. As long as I can get to the residents, and if I need to get to the planning commissioners, get to the planning commissioners in a timely manner. My office has looked at this so long and in such detail that if it's just the removal of that and a little tweaking at Valley Grove's uh, State Line Road area, then I can get a recommendation up pretty quick. I can't promise that my planning commissioners who are volunteers that come in once a month are going to be able to get in and I you know I, I can't promise that I can get to the residents in time I mean we can try obviously uh, we can call another town hall meeting like we did whatever you whatever your research says we have to do we'll expedite it as quickly as possible that's all I can promise but still worst case scenario yes. if Nick does research it tomorrow and says that we can't do that then basically it's just a matter of posting for another hearing and then we can get letting the Planning Commission after their meeting we can put it right back on the right. agenda immediately right and then so in September we can do that in September right but, but I, Go ahead, Nick. I'm sorry. I'm just getting confused on why it has to be a new project. Is if that... it's denied here, the project's being denied as a whole. I thought we're, not, I thought we're denying the rezoning. That, that, is, that is the project. It's a planning unit development project, and, and the board, the planning commission voted to deny the overall project. So that PUD request has been denied. On the 25th and, of August. Though. Right. It leaves it as a parcel of agricultural property again. So that being upheld here and it's brought back to a 280 acre piece of land it has to start the process back over um, I mean it'll essentially have a lot of the same details and won't be nearly as in-depth for um, the applicant um, he can do some tweaking but we have to act like it's a whole new project it's about four thousand dollars to reapply um, and we take it back through the process as we would now we can expedite a little quicker instead of going to the third uh, Tuesday for the board meeting we can come up to the first board meeting after that, whatever planning commission we fall through with. We also control the fees though, don't we? I mean, yeah, the, the fees are on the application and um, in the ordinance. Uh, I, I would plead, I would plead with you all, uh, Mr. Manley and Mr. Mayor, that whatever you do, you give the residents of the area time to respond, give proper public hearing. And, uh, it, you know, We've, we've had to do some research, too, on the question of lost the $8.5 million in loss of uh, value of the 490 houses. We spent some time on that with consultants. And, uh, well, this is, this is the first time that's been heard on the 25th. It was voted down, and uh, no residents were, were heard at that time. And I didn't, I didn't think that was an insurmountable problem at the time. But bringing it back up again does make it a problem. I just, I just think, in fairness to everyone, since there's still some question marks out there, and, and board, board, I'm not speaking for y'all, but I, I would think if I were in your shoes, I would. There's too many unanswered questions tonight, and I want the board to have a fair chance to be completely informed before they make a decision. So that's why it's my it's my recommendation that we do table it after hearing everything I've heard tonight. Did you want anything else from me, sir? No, I just, if you want to speak, is there anything else you want to say, you have the floor. Well, I, I've, I've got a quick uh, question for Mr. Baker. I've made the main points. Go ahead. Uh, I know you've been through all this. You've been down all the meetings. You've seen all the plans. And, uh, and I, I firmly believe, I think, the residents should have a chance to look at the new revised plan, new revision. But my question to you, and I, I, I'm not going to hold you do this, but Knowing everything you know, taking the warehouses out, is that something that you would be in favor of, you could live with? Or certainly. 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 Okay. The warehouses were the most damaging aspects of this, but uh, if we're going through the process of approving something through the Planning Commission, as the mayor's pointed out, they're serving probably gratis, aren't they? Pardon? They're probably serving without salary, aren't they? Are they not? The yes. Commission? Yes. Okay. So they're they're like 
they're like everybody in this room. They come here without their billfold being involved. I've been a landowner, and you know, I know when you buy land, some investments turn out better than others. Right, but I mean, all these people are residents of South Haven, so property yes. values do affect yes. them. Yes. And also, any kind of, that's why they're, on the, they're willing to serve on the zoning, uh, I mean, on the uh, planning commission, because sure. the decisions do have an impact on the overall financial health of the city as well, which affects sure. them and their taxes Maybe as well. Sure. And the, by the way, the property tax, we made an estimate on the property tax of the 490 houses, and this does not include Summerwood, and does not include the houses on State Line Road, and the houses on Tullahoma, does not include Williams. Uh, just considering those 490,000 houses, I'm sorry, 490 houses, we estimate that the property tax would be uh, 588,000 a year. So it's not that we homeowners are sitting back here not contributing to the city. We are. Sure. And I, I hope you'll take all these things into consideration. And uh, uh, I, uh, I think I have every reason to believe that there's a lot of integrity here. But, you know, use judgment and consider us as well, please. Absolutely. And if you'd like to know how many of the people here our residents, we can have them hold up their hands. And it is fair to say, and I, and I want everyone here, I want you to hear it straight from me, I'm not going to hide behind this question. My main goal as a mayor is to make sure that this board and everyone is completely informed. And, um, and I know this is, a, this is a tough call. I mean, it, it is. There's no doubt about it. But when you talk about the financial situation of the homeowners, you also got to think about the people in South Haven that are not here tonight, okay? Because when you're when you talk about bringing in a development to an undeveloped piece of property, there's a significant amount of revenue that that provides to the city, and and that benefits everyone in the city. Because I can tell you, when you're talking about a six hundred thousand to a million dollar uh, change in the revenue that the, that this would bring, uh, that does a lot. You can do a lot for six hundred thousand or a million dollars. And, uh, and so I'm just I'm just saying that although I, it's not that I respect everyone that's here. But I'm saying there's also a lot of residents of the city that are not here tonight that would benefit from the financial benefits of the development. There was no public notice that this was even on the agenda tonight. Isn't that right? No public notice it's, that this was on the agenda. Yeah, we we followed all the. It's, yeah, it's on the agenda. <coughs> no red signs. No, that's well, that's, a, that's already been done. That's that's already done. Already and that's also. where that's where you disagree with with the, Nick. The and dates. Myself, the dates. I need to change the dates. The dates are still Ju uh, June and July on the red signs. But you had a hearing right now. We had a hearing on the. But, the but we're past the hearing stage. This is this is on a formal city agenda, which is is public record. You had to, to, to a lot of people though, those red signs are public notice. And it, there was a hearing on those dates, though. But we're, we're we're past that. We've already had the hearing with the signs. No. Well, uh, there was a hearing on that. When that was there a hearing on the night of the red sign. No. The planning commission, this is what we asked you, the planning commission heard it on the night that was advertised yeah. there. It was tabled yeah. at that point. So the Board of Aldermen date did not correspond with the day it was going to be heard because it was tabled. Um, Mr. Baker brought it up to our office and that's when we contacted you. The, the, and, 20, the 25th of July was not on the red sign. You can go look at those red signs right now. And by the way, they're only on two sides, not three sides. Of the development. It's on three sides. I've got pictures of all three sides. Do you? Yes, I drove there myself. I beg your pardon. When was the original hearing date? November. No, like on the, on the red sign that was. November. Um, that was, I'm saying like, when, when did we have the actual hearing with the vote? The actual hearing, the, the actual hearing was June um, 26, which is on the hearing dates. And, which is on the, and it was tabled formally to, that night. So July. So July 25th, which is when it was brought next, off the table and to the brought back up. Meeting, to the next to the next planning commission planning mm -hmm. meeting, and, and they carried over to here and the action that night right it. the right. red signs as of today as of my driving past one up coming up here she had the june hearing june hearing that's right, right. and that's where we, it was formally tabled that's that's what, yeah. that's what we're talking right about. so if you would have came to the june hearing you would oh, know he's been here mr biker's been right, here with but, me no no, no i'm not saying you <laughs> but if you were another <laughs> citizen and you came to the june hearing uh that's posted you would know that it was tabled. Right. So, I mean, 
we don't have to give notice again for, for and like I said we've had a very I, I've got a, an email list that I've actually got it as the Pinewood Concerned Citizens Group and there's probably 50 people on there plus HOAs I talked to the presidents the Ansley Park HOA uh, and a couple of other people and then um, I submit to them everything. Any changes, any date changes, I'm trying to keep them as informed as possible. Uh, Mr. Baker comes by and picks his hard copies up at the front office. Um, so yeah. But you had a hearing at the June meeting. The June meeting yes, we did have a, we had a hearing at the June, <coughs> June meeting and it was formally tabled at that point. They just weren't on the exact dates so at the signs. So I think we met our first. No, no, man. The, the, my question is that the hearing note, the hearing you had, the June hearing you had was a date. Had that Pinewood was, on the hearing, and it that was, was advertised on the red side. Yes. Oh. In hopes of moving on, you know, so we can go on to our other items, I appreciate you coming forward, Mr. Baker, and speaking. Thank you for that information. It's very, very useful. And um, so it's my recommendation to the board to table this, to vote to table this for this evening until we can let Nick clarify. Well, you don't exactly. want to table it for the, do further research on the further revision on the further review of the submitted plans and what you're tabling for. Okay, is there a motion to do that? So moved. Second. So a motion by Alderman Gallagher, second by Alderman Ferguson. Is there any other discussion about tabling it? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Ferguson? Yes. Alderman Yes. Okay, and that motion carries. Okay, next is item four. Very simple. Bell Point Section D, in your general notes, it requires a 10 foot utility easement along all the street frontages for those lots. Um, in the development phase of this, we found we need to increase that to 20 feet along the road frontage, and we just need a Scribner Harris uh, recommendation so we can go change it at the Chancery Clerk's office. So Motion by Alderman Flores, second by Alderman Ferguson. Is there any discussion on four? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Ferguson? Yes. Yes. Okay, and that motion carries. Thank you, Whitney. All right, next on our agenda, my mayor's report. Just update you on a few things. Obviously, there's a lot of concern about the um, construction at Goodman and Getwell. The traffic with school starting tomorrow, uh, obviously it's going to be a difficult situation. There's no two ways about it. Uh, we have been in touch with um, MDOT engineers. I uh, will tell you that there's an MDOT engineer that will be on site uh, monitoring the signals uh, to make it as efficient as possible. Uh, a lot of myths going around. I, I didn't realize how many engineers we have in the city, but we got a lot of, we got a lot of road engineers that live in the city. Um, just want to clarify a couple of things. The, the main thing that's being done is this is part of the ITS project uh, that's a CMAC project, congestion mitigation and air quality. This uh, intelligent transportation system is being set up where the signals throughout Goodman Road from Isle Branch to Walls can communicate. And that way it helps the traffic move more efficiently east and west. It also gives other capabilities where you can have a digital reader board to inform drivers of uh, traffic delays. So it'll do a lot for the uh, traffic improvement on the east and west uh, travel on Goodman Road. The other thing that this does is it's amended the intersection to make it safer. Uh, it's a proven fact, statistics back this up strongly, that, that your right-hand yield lanes, when you're having to look back at traffic, uh, I'm sure everyone in here has either witnessed that or seen it. I know Alderman Gallagher and myself have seen it many, many times in the insurance business. That's one of the most common causes of wrecks. Someone looks back, they end up having to stop, they get rear-ended, it happens all the time. Uh, so that's one of the main reasons is to eliminate the uncontrolled lane, which is the yield lane. So that's being removed. Um, with that, there are improvements. Uh, you're still going to have a right lane where you can go straight or turn right, but you face the intersection instead of having to look back. So it makes it safer. That's one of the main reasons they're doing it. The other thing is that there's going to be two left turn lanes. Right now there's only one. So we're going to be adding a, add another left turn lane in all directions, which will improve the traffic situation greatly at Goodman and Gatwell. A lot of people don't know this. I'm asking everyone here tonight, uh, Mr. Long, if you can help me, anyone else, get the word out that uh, we're, the intersection is not being narrowed and reducing lanes, even though it appears to be narrowed, there is design there to add two left turn lanes, which are gonna help the traffic flow through Goodman and Gatwell. Um, until then, it's gonna take about four or five more weeks before they're done with that. 
So the bottom line is it's going to be tough. I mean, we did ask MDOT why they did not get this done before school started. Uh, we don't have the authority to set the uh, timelines for MDOT. Uh, we know it's going to be a, a bad situation with school starting, uh, but MDOT has the authority on their timeline. So we're just our traffic situation is going to be tremendously greater you know at Goodman and Getwell and also at Goodman and Tullahoma but anyway I appreciate uh, the questions that have been posed to me I can't get the information out quick enough so if anyone asks you that question please uh, share. Um, tennis expansion I recently the board approved uh, design for the new tennis expansion under our parks improvement plan um, that design is now complete. Uh, that will again, as we've discussed before, add eight additional outdoor tennis courts uh, in the current location of the South Haven Tennis Center. Uh, there will also be a pavilion in the middle, uh, nice um, bleachers. It's just set up so much better, you know, to hold tennis tournaments and things like that. So it's, it's really, really nice. But the design is done. And just to give you an update on timelines, the bids will be open on September 9th. Uh, the board will be asked to approve the bid on September 20th with construction starting sometime uh, in October. Uh, we plan to have before April of 2017, we plan to have the tennis court. So we've been talking about that, waiting on it a long time, uh, so very excited about that. Uh, with the Pine Tar Alley Road Extension, that has now connected the tennis center to Snowden Park. So we'll now consider that an entrance into Snowden Grove Park on the east side off Malone. So the park, uh, the new complex will be the Snowden Grove Tennis Complex. But we're excited about that. Last thing, uh, just to remind everyone, we do our uh, budget uh, decisions are coming up. We will have a budget hearing at our next board meeting, August 16th. That's all I have this evening. Next on our agenda is our personnel docket. Mr. Mayor, I move we approve the personnel docket as presented on this day. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Payne, <coughs> second by Alderman Gallagher. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Ferguson? Yes. Alderman Flores? Yes. Okay, and that motion carries. Uh, next on our agenda is our city attorney's legal update. Mr. Nick Manley again. Two quick things. Uh, first item is approval of the Dennis Greenfield on Friday, late Friday. It's just approval of a resolution appointing deputy clerks. This is for the training that they that the resolution is needed for the deputy clerks. We actually for Janice McCree, Alyssa Pruitt, Pam Powell, Sandra Pride, Ware. Um, just need approval for the for the resolution for the training they'll do in October. So there is resolution. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Kelly, second by Alderman Payne. Is there any discussion? Where does that training take place? In Oxford. In Oxford. Okay. Yes. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Uh, the next item is just a refund of assessment. Um, for 78, 79, 89 Malone Road. Uh, this had the property, uh, had assessments, the property sold after the assessments were, I mean, after the assessments were levied in the amount of, uh, there, there were some liens on the property which will deduct, but the assessment refund would be the amount of $1,122. So moved. Second. Uh, motion by Alderman Gallagher, second by Alderman Ferguson. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Ayes have it, motion carries. Okay, next on our agenda is our claims docket. Mr. Mayor, we approve the claims docket in the amount of $2,331,198.90, including demand checks and payroll. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Payne, second by Alderman Flores. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Kelly? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Gallagher? Yes. Alderman Ferguson? Yes. Alderman Flores? Yes. Okay, that motion carries. Next on our agenda is, is there a motion to determine the need for executive session? I'll make that. Second. We 
Go to motion by Alderman Gallagher, second by Alderman Kelly. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. I just have a motion carries. A need this evening is uh, personnel and fire department and potential litigation against the city and economic development. Now, is there a motion to declare executive session? Second. Okay, we have a motion by Alderman Payne, second by Alderman Gallagher. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. I just have a motion carries. The mayor board will now enter executive session. 